A Born Harbour cycle is simply the application of Hess's law to calculate lattice enthalpy specifically. This means that we need to find an alternative pathway to calculate the value for the lattice enthalpy. So the start point for us will be to remember what lattice enthalpy means. Lattice enthalpy is the energy required to separate one mole of an ionic compound into its gaseous ions. You'll notice in this definition it is always going to be energy required because in order to break one mole of an ionic compound into gaseous ions we have to provide lots of energy to overcome the strong electrostatic attraction between the ions. In order to find the alternative pathway for calculating this value, it's helpful to draw an enthalpy diagram. In an IB style question, you'll always be provided with some kind of diagram, often an enthalpy diagram like this, so that we can track the alternative pathway to calculate our lattice enthalpy. So first off, I'm going to take an example of sodium chloride for which we want to calculate the lattice enthalpy. The enthalpy of the sodium chloride ionic compound is going to be represented by the bottom line in this diagram. And I'm going to add the gaseous ions to the line directly above it. Therefore, this change in enthalpy is going to be representing my lattice enthalpy. You'll notice this arrow is pointing upwards because in order to increase the enthalpy or potential energy of my system, the system must absorb thermal energy from the surroundings. So this is always going to be an endothermic process. Now, if this is the value we are trying to calculate using Hess's law, we are going to have to find an alternative pathway using steps between the other lines in the enthalpy diagram in order to eventually calculate the lattice enthalpy. So on the left hand side of my diagram, the first step is always going to be the enthalpy change of formation. As a reminder, the enthalpy change of formation is the energy change to form one mole of a solid ionic compound from its elements in their standard states. So in this case, if we are forming one mole of an ionic compound from its elements in their standard states, the direction of this enthalpy change is going to be going down towards our sodium chloride at the bottom. And what elements are required? Well, we've got sodium and chlorine forming sodium chloride. So I need to consider how they exist in their standard states. Sodium as a metal will be a solid in its standard state and chlorine will be a diatomic gas. However, for the chlorine, because in sodium chloride there is only one chlorine, I'm going to have to use half a chlorine molecule instead of a full one. So the blue arrow now represents the enthalpy change of formation. So what's the next step? Well, let's focus on the sodium for the next couple of steps. We are trying to get from sodium solid atoms to gaseous sodium ions. So let's consider the two steps I will need to use in order to get there. Let's first consider how to turn from solid sodium into gaseous sodium. And this is known as the enthalpy change of atomization. It is the energy required to form one mole of gaseous atoms from one mole of atoms in their standard state. So the next step I'm going to take then is the enthalpy change of atomization for sodium. And notice that we haven't done anything to the chlorine in this stage, so we're going to leave that as is. The final step for sodium is going to be to turn it into a sodium ion by removing an electron. And this happens to be the enthalpy change of ionization. It is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms. So this will allow me to do the following change. Again, 
We've done nothing to the chlorine at this stage, so it can stay as is. One point to note, if you were dealing with an ion, for example, magnesium with two positive charges, you might need two separate steps here, the first ionisation energy and then the second ionisation energy. And in an IB question, you'd probably be given both values or maybe you'd have to find one in the data booklet. Now that my sodium ions in the gaseous state are where I need them to be, we can now focus on the chlorine. And we need to get from half a chlorine molecule in the gaseous state to a chloride ion in the gaseous state. And we've got two steps to do that. First of all, we want to be dealing in gaseous chlorine atoms, not molecules as we currently have. So we will need to consider how to break a molecule of chlorine into atoms. And this happens to be the average bond enthalpy. And the bond enthalpy specific to chlorine will be the amount of energy required to break one mole of a bond in a gaseous molecule. Now in our diagram, we are actually only dealing with half a molecule of chlorine, which seems a little bit strange. So let's first of all consider what would happen if I broke one chlorine molecule into atoms. So a bond enthalpy value that we can find in the data booklet would represent the change from one molecule into two atoms. We actually are only changing from half a molecule into one atom. So in our example, we are going to need to half the bond enthalpy value in order to represent the process that we need to do. Let's add that to the diagram. In this case, we've done nothing to the sodium ion at this stage, so I can leave that as is. So we've reached the highest line on our diagram, and the final step you'll notice is going to be going back down on the right hand side to get to my gaseous ions. And the change we're looking to do here is add one electron to my gaseous chlorine atom in order to turn it into a chloride ion. This happens to be the enthalpy change of electron affinity. And this is the energy required to add one mole of electrons to one mole of gaseous atoms. Given that this is a that normally a favourable process and exothermic, that is why our arrow for this first our electron affinity is going to be going down. And after that final step, I have now completed my alternative pathway to reach the gaseous ions from sodium chloride. So the final calculation I need to do is the following. I'm going to start down at the bottom line where my sodium chloride is in a solid state and I need to go backwards up that first blue arrow so I'm going to have to use the negative value. And by negative value I mean changing the sign on the enthalpy change of formation data. We then follow up in the same direction as the following arrows so I'm going to add enthalpy change of atomization I then add the enthalpy change of ionization and then half the bond enthalpy for a chlorine molecule. And then although I'm coming back down, I'm still following in the same direction as the arrow for electron affinity. So I'm going to add that value as well. And it will probably be a negative number. And following that process, I've now calculated my enthalpy change of lattice or the lattice enthalpy for sodium chloride. The only things to watch out for in more complicated examples are when you need two ionization values to get to a two plus ion, or perhaps two electron affinity values if I'm forming a two negative ion. And that is how we complete a Born Harbor cycle by applying Hess's law to find an alternative route. There's lots of key definitions, and you might need to use the data booklet to find some of the values. Hopefully this video is of some help.